joined the GJA in 1995 and became the Eastern Regional Secretary in 1998. You were elected the Regional Chairman in 2001. And during that period, you won the Best uh, GJA Rural Reporter Award twice. You have been solely in private practice and distinguished yourself in the field of newspaper, radio, and television journalism. The Ghana Journalist Association gives you this honorary award for being a formidable GJA activist and for combining your loyalty to the GJA and your passion to serve the Ghanaian media. And this one goes to AC Ohene. Let's put our hands together for AC Ohene. And to help us with the presentation is the British High Commissioner, His Excellency Ian Walker. His Excellency Ian Walker to join us for the presentation to AC Ohene. Due to the presentation uh, is uh, His Excellency Chutomi Himoni, who is a Japanese ambassador. The next citation, long before your ordination as a minister of the Seventh-day Adventist STA Church, on 15th March 1986, you had uh, as far back as 1977 during your pastoral training at the Adventist Second Seminary of West Africa in the Ogu State in Nigeria, established a special relationship with the media in Ghana. That was at a time where you served as a general secretary and public relations officer of the Ghanaian Student Association at that time. You strengthened your networking with the media in Ghana on your return to Ghana in July 1979. This relationship differed, especially during the SDA welfare and relief activities in the northern part of Ghana. The relationship grew in leaps and bounds when you were transferred to Accra in 1995 as manager of the Adventist World Radio and also director of the Communication, Public Affairs and Regional Library. While you were a member of the National Council of the Bible Society of Ghana, you assisted in media relations. You served in various capacities on the various media boards, including the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation Religious Advisory Committee and the GBC Christian Religious Broadcast Committee. All these activities brought you closer to the GJA and you became the unofficial chaplain of the association. In appreciation of your dedication to the GJA and the development of the Ghanaian media, the association confers on you companion of the GJA and friend of the media in Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together to welcome Pastor Joseph Aaron Hagan. Let's do it again for him as he comes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, thank you very much. 
I now hand you over to the Alpha Flames to give us a very short music and we'll continue with the honorary award. Thank you very much.
Flames Band. Let's put hands together for the Alpha Flames Band. Thank you very much. We'll continue with the honorary award, the final two. The citation reads, your long-term ambition was to become a journalist, although you could not attain that. You have remained loyal to the profession. You have been a fountain of sympathy for the association and a promoter of peaceful resolution of misunderstanding that arise among members. You are a staunch believer that journalists and by extension the media in its dispensation is established of democracy and a catalyst for development. You have demonstrated your administration for the role of journalism in society through consistent support for GJA over the years and by way of donation in cash or in kind towards the celebration of the World Press Freedom Day on uh, May 3 and the organization of the GJA Awards. For your monthly empathy and motherly empathy for the GJA and your support for the association development, it is hereby conferred unto you, companion of the GJA and a friend of press freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, this citation and this award goes to Madame Faustina Nelson. And to help us with the presentation, <laughs> Madame Adwa Yabuaferi, the former president of GJA, will help us with the presentation for this one. Let's put our hands together for Madame Faustina Nelson.
much and congratulations to you. Our final honorary award from a guest artist in 1987 at the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation and to the section manager of news editing, production and casting at the National Broadcaster. You have for over two decades uh, remained one of the leading faces of newscasting on national television in Ghana. The Ghana Journalists Association gives you the honorary award for your tenacity as news editor, producer, and newscaster, and for your loyalty for the development of public broadcast journalism in Ghana. Congratulations for being an inspiration to women in broadcasting in Ghana. This citation and this award goes to Mrs. Barbara Gazi. To help us with the presentation, Madam Gifstaff and Yadazi, who is the former GJA president, former member of the Council of State, and the first female president of the GJA, Madam Gifstaff and Yadazi, will help us with the presentation as we welcome Mrs. Barbara Gazi. Let's put our hands together for her. Thank you very much and congratulations to you. We move on with the program. We're going to have two quick, short remarks. Quick, short emphasis on that. The first one, we're supposed to have some remarks coming from the NMC chair. Unfortunately, he's not here with us. So we take the first remark from uh, Professor Audrey Gajapu, who is with the School of Communication at the University of Ghana. Let's put our hands together for her as she comes. Again, the applause is too weak. Let's do it again. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chairperson, the Chief Justice, Minister for Information and all other protocols of them, ministers, on behalf of the Chairman of the National Media Commission, who sends his profuse apologies because he could not be here, and on behalf of other members of the commission, some of whom are here tonight, I'd like to congratulate first the GJA for continuing to organize this much anticipated annual event. This is the 23rd award ceremony, and we believe that such public recognition and celebration of journalism excellence helps to drive quality work and to showcase examples of what journalism has to offer. We celebrate all 36 nominees who we are told were chosen out of a very competitive field of almost 550 journalists. It takes hard work, skill, and importantly, commitment to professional standards and ethics to be nominated for these prestigious awards. So for those of you who will not emerge as winners, do not despair, even if you are disappointed. Be proud in the knowledge that you count among the tops, and don't give up trying to shine in your profession. You will have better luck next time. Finally, for those of you who will eventually emerge winners tonight, we applaud you. You have been adjudged the very best in your field, and that comes with onerous obligations to keep up the gold standard. These are perilous times for the profession, even in so-called democracies. So we urge you to continue to strive for distinction and to uphold the tenets of this noble profession for the good of the nation and indeed the world at large. Thank you for your attention and God bless. Thank you very much, Professor Audrey Gajeko. We've done a few minutes. We have a few to go. Ladies and gentlemen, I won't waste your time. In 2013, I won the CNN African Journalist Award, and he was interviewing me. And as excited as I was, I was going on and on and on and on. And he just looked at me and did like that. And that was a very, defi a very defining moment for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Kojo Apon Krumah, he's a Ghanaian politician. He has a background in finance, law, development studies, and communications. He started his career 
as a treasury analyst in 2006. In later years, he moved on to become a journalist and subsequently a lawyer. In January 2017, he was sworn in as Member of Parliament for Ofwasi Ayurebi and Deputy Minister for Information. In October 2008, he became the Substantive Minister for Information, designate by the way, I must say. Mr. Nkrumah is passionate about impacting lives and transforming societies. He's Christian, married to Ekia Opo Nkrumah, and they have two children. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Kujo Opo Nkrumah, the voice that some time ago you certainly want to wake up to. Good to thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Professor Chairperson, her Ladyship, the Chief Justice, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a night for awards and not so many words. But if I have your indulgence, there are a few things I'd like to share with this gathering here tonight. The founders of our 1992 constitution gifted us, and we have also worked hard to maintain a vibrant liberal media over these years. Our press freedom credentials continue to enjoy praise from across the continent and indeed the world over. In May this year, as you are aware, Ghana was selected by UNESCO to host the World Press Freedom Day in Accra. That celebration drew close to about a thousand participants from all over the world who came to share the best practices of our trade. It's one of the pieces of evidence that journalism in Ghana is gaining increasing recognition the world over. In our trade, we sometimes suffer attacks and threats which must be condemned and redressed when they occur. On the global scene, the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, as has been mentioned already, is a heinous, abominable, evil act that must never be repeated. And we urge the international community to put pressure on both Turkey and Saudi Arabia to find the perpetrators and to punish them, to deter future contemplators of similar actions from doing so. Here in Ghana, we also condemn unreservedly attacks on media professionals in recent times, including the assault on our good friend Latif Idris. I've personally engaged with Latif, the Ghana Police Service, and the National Media Commission, and we expect to bring some resolution to that matter in the shortest possible time. Journalism is not a crime, and violence against media practitioners and journalism, and journalists, I beg your pardon, must not be tolerated. While we celebrate and advocate for media freedom tonight, our trade itself is one that calls on us to shine the light on all aspects of society, including our own. This year's theme, colleagues, is a rallying cry to introspect. And if we are introspecting on journalism, permit me to broaden the theme a little bit and treat it as an examination of the state of journalism in Ghana today and perhaps what we can do to promote this noble profession. There are some inherent risks in our trade that we must take a bit more seriously than we have done in times past and address. First, is the risk posed to this profession by the poor state of the welfare of journalists. The opening up of the media landscape in Ghana has been characterized by the growth of media houses with various interests. The expansion and the improvement in the sector, however, has not translated into a corresponding improvement in the welfare and conditions of service of a lot of media practitioners. Practitioners are some of the least paid professionals in Ghanaian industry today. And that, I'm sure you'd agree with me, is not good enough. I want to use this opportunity to call on media owners and managers who are here with us tonight to take the welfare of their employees a lot more seriously than we have done in times past. This is necessary to get and to keep the best and to preserve the quality of the profession. Another matter I want to raise with you this evening is the subject of accuracy in our reportage. Journalism thrives on accuracy. 
But today, we all agree that there are increasing complaints from various quarters, individuals, businesses, academia, etc., that there are too many instances of inaccuracies in our reportage. Colleagues, all of these people cannot be wrong all the time. Now the worrying trend is even media houses that are beginning to take on other media houses for inaccurate and sometimes what they call fake reportage. The time has come for us to take a second look at how much of our work is fact that we report, how much of it is opinion, how much of it is spin, so that we can preserve the integrity of the profession that we practice. Finally, I want to speak about the subject of media responsibility. Yes, our constitution charges us to hold governments accountable to eschew corruption, etc. And we promote a lot of that in our media work. But media's responsibility goes beyond investigative journalism and exposing nefarious acts. Media responsibility also includes building the national psyche. Colleagues here tonight, I want to say to you that you are the ones who determine whether Ghanaians will hear stories that inspire us and challenge us to do better, stories that determine the kind of psyche that we express as a nation. You have the power to determine if the next generation of Ghanaians will grow up believing in themselves, believing in their nation, and believing in their ability to change the world. You also have the power to determine if they'll grow up believing that nothing can ever work in Ghana or nothing works in Ghana. I want to encourage you to take this responsibility seriously. Showcase our people, or showcase to our people, the excellence among us so that you can inspire us while you draw attention to the ills of society as well. The reinforcement of positive lessons generates a snowball effect and gradually it will urge more people towards excellence. We are storytellers and though we know that bad news sells, let us not just look for the gory story that easily sells. Let us also make an effort to find the stories that ought to be told. Let's make space in our pages, space within our airtime, space for the things that build the nation's can-do spirit as well. On our part as government, we will continue to work in strengthening the state agencies that are responsible for facilitating of the media enterprise. Parliament is seized with the RTI bill, and I urge you also to encourage Ghanaians to reach out to their members of parliament to treat that bill with a sense of urgency that it deserves. In the year 2019, the Akufuado administration is expected to collaborate with the Ghana Journalist Association, the GIJ, the School of Communication Studies, GIBA, and the National Media Commission to roll out a media capacity enhancement program which would be a further boost to the capacity of journalists the nation over. I want to end tonight by congratulating all of those who will be receiving awards, all of those who have even been nominated, and those who are hoping to receive awards in the years to come. Let me also call on each and every one of us who practices journalism, that our words, not just the pen, our words are mightier than the sword. Let us use our words to build a nation that we can all be proud of in the end. God bless us all. Thank you. God bless you too, sir. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment is here. This is when we start calling out those who are winning awards and um, it can get a little, you know, jittery in your stomach, but never, never mind. So the first category is news reporting for print. The sponsor for this category is Tobinko. May I invite here Daniel Japanin, who is financial controller of Tobinko, to present this award for us. Mr. Japanin, if you're here, can we give him a round of applause as he comes to join me here on the stage? Now, in this public interest piece, the writers gave insight into the dangers lurking on Ghana's roads. They relied on good background information and statistics to highlight key accident-prone spots that must be noted by road users. The Daily Graphics Road Survey on three highways implicates vehicles parked at vast tops, shoulders and middle of roads, 
as a cause of fatal accident. The outcome of your work reignited the debate on mandatory national touring services in relentless pursuit of public safety. It is an excellent example of media's agenda-setting role for discussion of policy issues. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner for this award is Severus Kalideri and Seth J. Bokwe from the Daily Graphic. The story's title is Danger Persist on Our Roads. Our ref from Tobinko to do the presentation. It's in order, it's in order. A fine, sweet applause is in order. Representative from Tobinko, can we have the award here, please? There it is. Do we have a representative from Tobinko here? Tobinko. I believe they're coming. They're on the way. But let me quickly tell you a bit more about this story once again. It is that it is, the title of that story is Danger Persist on Our Roads. Danger Persist on Our Road. And it is a piece that highlighted the dangers on Ghana's roads. And if we want to talk about the dangers of Ghana, Ghana's roads, we will not finish. Maybe the, uh, the, uh, the information minister I will not necessarily agree with me, but uh, yes. The dangers on our roads is still a subject worth uh, talking about. It is still a subject worth doing stories about. And there we have the Tobinko representatives here to give the awards to them. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause. Thank you so much, sir, and congratulations to you, gentlemen. Actually, this gentleman, he always seems to get an award. He always, he's always on the list. Congratulations, gentlemen. The next category is sports, and it is for TV. The person who's going to present this award is Frances Noble Nkrumah. He, she's with World Vision International Ghana. Madame Frances, if we can have you on stage from World Vision Ghana. Now, this is what the story is about. You have over the years distinguished yourself as a trusted brand in sports reporting with special interest in Ghana football. You're known in the football industry as Sports Obama. You host the respected sports court on Atinka TV, which has attracted the attention of many sports lovers. And if you live in Ghana, you know that we're crazy about sports. Well, you can say we're crazy about soccer but it's still sport, isn't it? Well, during the year under review, your program exposed some suspicious and controversial contracts in the administration of the past Ghana Football Association. Now, there is a big story. Your contribution to the development of football is unique, and for that reason, the committee awards you the best sports reporter 2017. And this goes to Sadiq Adams from Atenka TV. Sadiq Adams from Atenka TV. Certainly, the applause is in order. May I have from Well Vision, Frances Noble Nkrumah. Certainly, there she is behind me. Congratulations. The Sports Obama, it is. a good feeling to win an award thank you thank you and congratulations to you once again the next to present the award for the features radio features category is dr. Osenko Ugogo who is a communications and external relations manager for New Mont Ghana doc if you're here kindly join me here on the stage so that you can do this presentation for us your documentary for feature story balls in danger entered the world of men and told the story of how men are castrated as a result of prostate cancer, which is indeed a major killer in the country at the moment. The story made a lot of impact 
because your interview with doctors at our two top medical facilities in the country, that's Kolebu and the Konfuanochi Teaching Hospitals, provided the solution to get out of the chronic disease and when early treatment is sought. Thank you and well done. This is to set Kwame Boateng, my colleague at All News. The applause is in order. Can I have Dr. Alsen Kogogo from New Montana Limited? Thank you very much, ma'am, for coming. So, Seth Kwame Boateng is in school, but of course, multi. Are you kidding me? Seth is here, ladies and gentlemen. I thought she he wasn't. <laughs> Congratulations, Seth. Balls in danger. That's what we're talking about. For radio features. Seriously, I'm surprised. I wasn't expecting you. <laughs> Congratulations, Seth Kwame Boateng. And indeed, that name is a brand in documentary and filmmaking here in Ghana. Okay, Seth, you will have to explain how you got lost from London and found yourself here. Seth Kwame Boateng, my colleague at Joinus. Congratulations from all of us, Seth. Now we're going to TV features for TV. That's the next category. The sponsor is Royal Cozy Hills Hotel, and they like to be called the Jirapa Dubai. I have here to present the awards, Michael Kluge, who is the managing director. Michael, if we have you here, kindly join me here on the stage. The story creatively used video to enhance the written word with compelling visuals and sound bites. She takes viewers on a journey from landlines and telephone booths to today's pervasive use of mobile phones and digital gadgets. She provides appropriate data to drive home her point. Her dexterous use of analogy, which compares cigarette addiction, tells a compelling story. In recognition of this excellent job, the panel of judges awards you this award in the features television category. And this goes to Peggy Amadonko from GBC. The story's title is Mobile Phones, The New Cigarettes of the 21st Century. Peggy Amadonko, she is also one of the people who are not new to this awards or to the TJA Awards at all. And an applause is in order. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so Peggy, we're waiting for you to hand you this award. And it will certainly be interesting to see the story that talks about mobile phones and, and basically link it to cigarettes because cigarettes is very addictive. And so if you're, I mean, all of us, are, I, how many of us have not been on our phones since we got here? I bet I won't get any hands up. Okay, I caught someone right in front of me. He's on his phone. Okay, so Peggy is not here. Anybody to take the award for Peggy? Anybody from GBC? to take the award for Peggy. A lot of people from GBC, help us please, thank you. And just so you know, we're live on GTV as well. So this is to you GTV, this is coming right home. If you're not so tired, you can still give them a round of applause, thank you. That award is for Peggy Amadon, but they need to take a photo, so if you could adjust yourself. There we go. Okay, congratulations to Peggy Amadon, wherever she is, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Michael, for doing that for us. The next category is investigative reporting, which is indeed the theme for this year's awards. The sponsor for this award is Newmont Ghana Limited, and the presenter is Atta Ahin, who is with the Water uh, Sanitation and Hygiene Tech he is a water and sanitation uh, tech coordinator. This award, in this story, it focuses on the vibrant activities of sex workers at the Kwame Nkrumah interchange area along the rail lines. Now, the story identified that two years after the Crown Metropolitan Assembly demolished some 1,000 brothels, the structures were back and the sex workers had returned to business. Now, your story led to the collaboration between the AMA and the Railways Ministry to demolish all structures in the area and to give people the opportunity to finally live 
and work there in peace. For your bold initiative, the GJA awards you the best investigative reporter. This goes to Stanley Nee Blue of TV3. And the person to do this award is Atta Ahin. Mr. Atta Ahin, kindly join us here on the stage and do us this honor. The story's title is The Street Sex Business. The Street Sex Business. That's a very interesting one. A round of applause is in order. Hopefully you're not too tired. And you do this for us. Thank you so much. There they come as a whole team. Congratulations. Sit down. There are indeed still some brothels that need attention. And indeed, it is neither a fraternity nor a sorority, as our chairperson said. So we'll be looking at those areas as well. Congratulations. Congratulations, Team TV3. And that award goes to Stanley Nee Blue. Sylvia Dauda Owu is the Deputy Chief Executive of Shippers Authority. She will do the next award. The category is maritime, maritime. So if we do have you here, Sylvia Dauda, or will kindly join us from Shippers Authority to do us this honor. In 2017, you investigated the gradual collapse of one of the largest shipyards in Africa, the Tema Shipyard and Dry Dock Limited. The investigations eventually brought to light the need for the then government to release the shipyard to an able supervisor the Ghana Port and Harbour Authority, and it brought rapid transformation to the facility. The GJA recognizes your tremendous contribution to the development of maritime, the maritime industry and has the honor to nominate you as the best maritime reporter for the year 2017. And this goes to Grace Nana Isi Boateng from Oman FM, the Kansas City Media House. Nana Isi Boateng. The person doing this presentation is Sylvia Dauda O. Thank you. So I think you need to come this way because apparently you're not giving the cameras, uh, <laughs> you're not giving the cameras an easy job. Congratulations, Grace. Congratulations, Grace. Okay, they should have been here instead. Okay. After you've taken this, can you please help us to be here so we take the photos here for the paparazzi here. Thank you very much. Please, this way. Okay, so that is Grace Nanaisi Watting from the Kansas City Media Limited, specifically Oman FM, and the story is Maritime. Thank you so much, and congratulations to Team Oman FM. Let's step to education now. That's the next category. And the person doing us this honor is Tessam Ariam, the country director of Plan Ghana. If we have you here, kindly join us on the stage so you could do this honor for us. Now, this is a moving piece that is compelling to watch from start to finish. It displays a depth of interviewing skills that gives insights that many others may have missed. The blind, deaf student. Is a good piece of journalism that brings to the fore some of the challenges faced by a section of our society in the 21st century. It is a call for a purposeful national action. Your good work is highly commendable and deserves the award of best television report in education category. Ladies and gentlemen, this award goes to Peter Paul Adato from TV3. The Thank you very much, sir, for coming. The title of the story is The Blind Deaf Student. The Blind Deaf Student. Okay. Can you go this way a little? So the cameras... Okay, thank you very much. Hopefully the cameras are happy now. So where is the award winner? A round of applause is in order. Team TV3 once again. Congratulations, Team TV3. The Blind Deaf Student. And this award goes to Peter Kwao Adato from TV3.
Congratulations, Team TV3. And ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to you for sitting here and supporting your people. They really appreciate it. This is just the first category. We'll bring you the next 11 uh, category, and you will get to know the winners. Let's go to the Ghana National Fire Service Band for a quick interlude as we bring to you the next category of winners. Are you ready for us, band? Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, they've been playing since, I think, 6 p.m. I think they've done really well, and they deserve an applause, don't they? Thank you so much.
you so much, the Ghana National Forest Service Band. This is from the Buzz Band, I understand. Congratulations and thank you so much uh, for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to introduce our guest speaker in just a few minutes. Allow me to do the next three in the first 10 categories for the awards. This award is, this award is electronic, news reporting electronic. Peter Kwao Adato, your story exposed a consignment of a 40-footer container full of rotten sardines, which was going to penetrate the Ghanaian market for innocent consumers to buy imported toxic expired sardines and to eat. Your expose prompted the Food and Drugs Authority to take swift action and impounded the consignment hidden at Ofanko near Amasaman here in Accra. Your work really saved a lot of lives. Ayeko, this award goes to Peter Kwao Adato of TV3. The presenter for this award is Solomon Edu Atepo. For he is the head of marketing for ADB. ADB is sponsoring this award category. And congratulations to you, Peter Kwao Adato of TV3. The presenter for this award is Solomon Edu Atefo, Head of Marketing, ADB. I know you're tired, but you know, you just can't help but clap. Thank you so much. And they've come back with a bigger team, TV3. Team TV3, congratulations to you. Okay, so, I think the cameras would want you this way. It makes their work easier. Congratulations, Team TV3, and an applause is in order. Rotten Sardines, that's the title of the story. Congratulations. The next category is Domestic Tourism Print. Domestic Tourism Print. The sponsor for this award is Ghana Tourism Authority. And the person going to present this award is Akwesia Jiman, who is the CEO of the Ghana Tourism Authority. Your script stands out because of your deep understanding of the tourism industry. Your story succeeded in directing the attention of both the people and the authorities to the fact that a tourist sport that used to give the country millions of cities every year had been closed down for over two years. You captured in that story the low level of respect that managers of the sector give to tourists. You used decent language to report on such a worrying story. It is for this reason that the committee awards you Best Reporter Domestic Tourism Print. This award, ladies and gentlemen, goes to Charles Andor. Charles Andor from the Mirror newspaper. Congratulations, Charles Andor, and you've got a huge applause. I didn't even have to ask for it. Sounds good. Charles, if you're here, come to the stage for your award. It is ready and waiting for you. There he goes. Congratulations, Charles. And this award is a domestic tourism print. Congratulations to you. And the last award in this category is Features Print. Features Print. After this, I'm going to introduce to you our guest speaker and we'll hear from her. In yet another tale of child marriage, Rebecca Duho's article, Do Not Force Me to Ripe, I Am Not a Fruit. It did not only highlight the health implications of child marriage, but also the social economic costs. The story was clear with anecdotes and verified figures. It highlights how child marriage robs such young girls of their rights to education, right to enjoy their childhood, the right to good health, and most importantly, the right to a good future. As appropriately titled, the feature concluded by highlighting the need to ensure that children should be nurtured to reach their full potential and not to be married off when they are not ripe. The title is Do Not Force Me to Ripe, I Am Not a Fruit. Congratulations to you, Rebecca Kweku Duho, 
of Daily Graphic. Rebecca Kwekudulo, the person who is presenting this award is Dickens Tunde. He's with the World Vision, Ghana. Dickens Tunde, he's with the World Vision to help us present this award. Rebecca Kwekudulo, congratulations to you, Team Daily Graphic. There she comes. And you got a standing ovation behind you, just in case you didn't see. Congratulations. Do not force me to write. I am certainly not a fruit. Congratulations once again, Rebecca. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, let me tell you about a woman that I admire so much. She had her master's degree in law from the Harvard University in the United States of America. She served on the Supreme Court of Ghana since 1995. And in 2017, she was appointed as Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, I am particularly honored to present, and please do receive, Ghana's second female Chief Justice and our guest speaker for tonight, Her Ladyship, Sophia Abnabwafwe Kufu. A standing ovation, certainly in order. And if you are a woman who believes in women empowerment, you are a man, you have to believe in women empowerment. This is a moment to be happy and to celebrate. Madam Chairperson has already decreed that we, there shouldn't be any lengthy um, preambles and greetings. So I will duly observe all protocols and uh, say a good evening to everybody. But before I go into my, my speech, I would like to congratulate all the award winners and uh, those who competed but didn't win. They also added to the joy of competition. Now, it's my pleasure and indeed an honor to be your guest speaker tonight on this occasion of the 23rd Ghana Journalists Association Awards. My joy cannot be properly understood unless one knows that although I am a child of the manse, I have journalistic family connections. My dear late father, Reverend F.W.K. Akufu, was in the 1950s the editor of the Christian Messenger which is one of the oldest titles in the history of Ghana, of Ghanaian journalism, having been founded in 1883. One of my elder brothers, Conrad Akufu, after working with the Daily Graphic, became the correspondent of the Ghana News Agency in London in the, in the 1960s. And this was before his untimely death, and he was succeeded by Professor Esilfi Konwa, who had been his able assistant, and I had hoped to see him here tonight, but I'm told he's not present. So, Prof Konwa, my greetings to you. Today, as the media community celebrates and restates their noble goals and, reward, and rewards those who have contributed 
to the uplifting of their image, I can declare that I can declare my total solidarity with them without favoring the old pra practice of soli, although you have already started with the item 13. Now, Madam Chairperson, I'm, I feel that I'm in good company tonight as I see so many distinguished ladies who are women leaders in our country. I see, I, I will not mention any people, but I see so many people. And uh, if I may say so, quite a number of them went to my old school, Wesley Girls High School, the best school in Ghana, whether it's for male or female. And if one day it is decided that they are going to go co-ed, we will not fight about it. It is such recognition of the ability and capability of women that promotes the necessary equity and equality-based partnership between men and women in all fields of human endeavor, which is good for human development and nation building. And I think that one of the secrets of how far we have come as a democratic nation is how far we have embraced equity and equality and gender equality. The theme given me to, the, to address on tonight can be tricky, not because of the subject matter, but because of the circumstances of time. The state of investigative journalism boundaries of privacy and borders of the public interest. I will endeavor to speak with clarity and to sufficiently address the matter without passing any judgment one way or the other because I don't know what sort of matter I may have to adjudicate upon in the a court of, in my court concerning the boundaries of privacy and the borders of public interest, which necessarily arise from the provisions of our Constitution. Now, nobody can contest the fact that investigative journalism has been part of the culture and traditions of Ghanaian media dating back to the time of the struggle for independence. Ghana's situation, however, cannot be compared with the practice of Mac Rakers and the practice of yellow journalism, which has beset certain parts of the developed world. But neither can it be compared to the dangers that journalists have faced and continue to face in other parts of the world, particularly under authoritarian regimes of various types, whether they will accept that they are authoritarian or not. As an example, I would go across history and mention, for example, the cases of Dele Jiwa, Robert Chamwani Chalubuto, Norbert Zongo, and as, uh, as I was writing this, the matter of Jamal Khashoggi had not yet come up, so I had to pencil him in because this is all because a journalist chose to criticize. The right to criticize is part of the right of the public to information and the right of the journalist to publish. The dangers are always lurking around. This topic is well crafted because to my mind the limits of investigative journalism is privacy. And the limits of privacy is the public interest. And this, if we, if we bear this simple statement in mind, we will not 
cross lines that will create problems. Because what is required is a careful act of balancing in order to reach a perfect equilibrium in a budding democracy such as ours or wherever, so long as the, 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 there are investigative journalists who want to peek into people's private lives, they must also bear in mind the importance of ensuring that in peeking into somebody's private life, they are serving a public interest and not just stirring up mischief. To achieve this balance, media practitioners and lawyers should make sure that they have fully grasped the fundamental principles of privacy and public interest. The concept of privacy going back in history was very slow in developing. And in our history, in 1970, the Ghana Court of Appeal per Justice Apalu J.A., as he then was, clearly and boldly declared that, that as the law now stands, there is no general tort of invasion of privacy giving rise to either damages or to an injunction known to the common law. However, in that judgment, his lordship upheld the principle of privacy. And he held in obita that I think it right that we go along with those courts which provide a remedy irrespective of contract or trust against the commercial appropriation of a plaintiff's name or likeness without his or her consent. Such protection should, I think, be rested on a right to privacy. I can find no sound reasons of public policy in this country against according relief to a plaintiff whose portrait has been used either for commercial advertisement or sale without his authority. But where the publication of the picture is merely for cultural purposes without any motive to gain or profit, it will take a lot to persuade me that in a culture conscious, in a culture conscious country like Ghana, the courts should either buy the award of damages or by means of an injunction inhibit the doing of an act which may, many people would judge to be in the overall interest of public interest. In such a case, I would leave the unauthorized use of the picture to be catered for by the copyright. End of quotation. The the concept of privacy grew very, very slowly over the years. And in Britain, which resisted the concept of privacy, eventually gave in. And in the Naomi Campbell against NG, MGN case, the plaintiff Naomi Campbell was photographed coming out of a center for the treatment of people with drug problems. The Daily Mirror published a picture of her with the heading, Naomi, I'm a drug addict. The article contained information relating to Ms. Campbell's treatment for drug addiction. The actress sued. Her lawyers conceded that being a celebrity, the public had a right to know of her condition. She nevertheless scored an important point, and she was indeed given damages for breach of confidentiality and awarded compensation under the Data Protection Act of the United Kingdom for certain details which were added in the course of the story. In Ghana, there has been much progress since the Constitution, which was promulgated in 1992. For under Article 18 
on fundamental human rights. It, it, it was enacted, and it is a provision that no person shall be subjected to interference with the privacy of his own property, correspondence, or communication, except in accordance with law, and as may be necessary in a free and democratic society for public safety, the economic well-being of the country, for the protection of health and morals, for the prevention of disorder or crime, or for the protection of the rights and freedoms of others. So in Ghana, no one can plead interference or invasion of his or her privacy when the interference or invasion is in accordance with law. And the purpose of the interference or invasion is necessary for the prevention of crime, for example. But the Constitution must always be read in its totality. Never should any provision be read in isolation. So this provision I have just read is subject to the legal and constitutional protection of privacy that has been taken beyond doubt and indeed is a constitutional protection. So when we're dealing with privacy and the public interest, public interest must never take away privacy. And privacy must never override public interest. And it's a very, very delicate balance. And it takes a lot of wisdom and a lot of uh, uh, self-introspection. It also takes a lot of research and a lot of self-information when you are a media practitioner so as you don't fall foul. And, of course, there are various institutions that have come up or sought to come up with certain rules of thumb to guide the work. So, for example, the Society of Professional Journalists and the Quentner Institute for Media Studies in the U.S. in 1992 did draft some certain guideline, guidelines for use of hidden cameras. And these guidelines, which have been outlined in the American Journalism Review, stated that hidden cameras, for example, should be used only when the information is pro of profound importance. That also takes a, a, a judgment, and sometimes it will be on the spot judgment. When all other alternatives for obtaining the same information have been exhausted, when the individuals involved in their news organizations apply through outstanding quality of work as well as the commitment of time and funding, the excellence needed to pursue the story fully. When the harm prevented by the information revealed through deception outweighs any harm caused by the act of deception. When the journalists involved have conducted a meaningful, collaborative, and deliberative decision to justify deception. Therefore, any subterfuge, any interference, any deception, quote and unquote, has to be used and applied advisedly, having considered all the parameters. In Ghana, the Ghana Journalists Association has adopted a code of ethics which embodies some of the best practices in modern democratic states. And it's very important that not only should these best practices be adhered to, but they must be uh, continually reviewed, continually revised to make sure that they remain meaningful because considering the speed with which technology is changing 
the, 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 the ground and the ground rules and the accessibility to people's private spaces, the, the standards of operation and the criteria must also be constantly looked at so as to continue to sustain the delicate balance I have already mentioned. For the purpose of invasion of privacy to be lawful under our constitution, we must bear in mind that at all times, the act of invasion itself must be lawful in the first place. You cannot break into somebody's house. You can't break and enter into somebody's house in order to, 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 to know about their, within their private space. That is breaking and entry. That is a crime in itself. The lawfulness of the act of invasion of privacy within the meaning of our constitution includes the requirement that the invasive person ought to be an agent of the state, usually a law enforcement officer or a controlled informer. This calls for a greater collaboration between state agencies and private media practitioners who engage in investigative journalism to help unravel crimes, especially those committed in secret. The successful plea of public interest will be on the same footing as in cases of defamation and revelation of state secrets. Therefore, it will be the court of justice which will finally be the best to determine the question of privacy and public interest. If that is required, it is never, in the end, purely a matter of personal conjecture or opinion. Madam Chair, the time has come to review the questions of privacy and public interest in order to introduce the proper checks and balances. Because the Constitution has set its provisions. There is now the need to add flesh to the framework so that the, 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 the practitioner gets more in terms of legal guidance from specific laws that set out the parameters for the practice of the rights that have been set out in the Constitution. And in any functional democracy, customs and traditions of investigative journalism must continue to be alive and kicking, but are better and more safely practiced within a more defined area. There can never be such definition as to create borders and boundaries, but there has to be guidance and guidelines so that, so, so as to enable the practitioner to know where the limits are and where the freedoms are. With technical, with the technical ease, of recording and photography in particular. For example, we've been sitting here, people have been taking pictures. I'm sure pictures have been taken of me. I hope people have not put pictures on, of me on their platforms, but I'm sure they have. Have they invaded my privacy? Maybe they have. But this is a public event. And so, in my view, they took their picture, they didn't break into my space, they didn't come and shove it in my face, they may put it on their platform, but they cannot say that I'm their best friend. And you cannot say, uh, Justice Akufu quaffing beer, because I have been drinking water. <laughs> All these are sometimes based on the better judgment of the person putting out the news, but at the same time, there is also common sense guiding, but there should be more 
legal definitions that give greater and safer guidelines without also taking away the rights. Now, publication of information obtained through investigative journalism should always be guided by the constitutional provision that a person is not guilty until proven guilty or until the person pleads guilty. Sometimes the publications that, we, that come in the news media are so condemning right from the first day that it's almost as though there is no room for any other position other than that which has been categorically stated in the media. And we have to remember that the protections under Chapter 12 for the media are subjected to the laws that are reasonably required in the interest of national security, public order, public morality, protection of reputations. I hate it there again, protection of reputations, rights, freedoms of other persons. And under Article 165, media rights and freedoms are also not a limitation on Chapter 5 rights. That's why I said that the Constitution needs to be read in its entirety. You don't take your rights and in exercising it, damage other people's rights. One of the first principles we learned in the law of talks was that, to put it colloquially, all rights and all duties meet at the tip of your nose. My rights end at the tip of your nose and yours ends at the tip of mine. In other words, respect mine, and I should respect yours as well. Now, speaking of reputations, one old Swahili old man told me of um, a saying that they have, that words are like sugar, and when you pour it in, a, in sand, you can never pick them again. Firstly, the words are ruined and you can never repair the damage you have done to somebody's reputation, even if you apologize, even if you have to pay damages, whatever penalties are, are, and, and, and are exacted from the person who breaches and abuses somebody's reputation, that reputation at the same time is tarnished forever. Therefore, that's one of the things that we need to be very, very particular about when we are exercising the, all the broad rights and freedoms that have been given by our Constitution. Although the risk associated with investigative journalism in, in particular, and journalism in general still remain, even in Ghana and even under our Constitution. It is quite evident that the tradition lives on with its intensity being aided by the growth and sophistication of information technology and modern facilitation. It has made it easier for investigative journalists to operate easily and efficiently undercover. The situation has also made it much more favorable for even ordinary citizens too, which brings us to social media, because one day the debate will also move into whether when somebody is publishing on social media, when a private citizen is publishing on social media, they are performing 
a journalistic act or not. When um, my grandson decides that he, is, he has developed a blog and is writing all kinds of things, is he a journalist for that purpose or what is he? That is one debate in the future that we will have to also deal with. Madam Chairperson, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with this trend, there is no doubt that a rise in public interest in the work of journalists, of investigative journalists and the media as a whole is important in exposing wrongdoings and serious crimes in our society. But it is also very important in the, pro in the, in the development, in the progression of our national ethos. The Honorable Minister of Information did touch on that, that the space within which the media operates is a space which gives them the power to dictate what we do, where we go, what we hear, how, how matters that are said somewhere are, put, are brought into the public domain with various interpretations. Therefore, it's a very, very important duty which must not be performed lackadaisically or wantonly or whimsically. And for that reason, it is important to remember the point that I made at the beginning that investigative journalism, the limits of investigative journalism, and for that matter of journalism, is privacy. And the limits of privacy is public interest. That balance has to be struck at all times. I, therefore, I just want to touch on matters such as professionalism versus personalization. Personalization of the views of the writer as well as personalization of any animus against the subject matter of the publication. We must also never lose sight of the importance of simple respect because respect goes a very, very long way and particularly in the handling of issues concerning gender rights and gender politics. Last week, there was an occurrence that stirred up a lot of issues concerning gender. And I was surprised listening to the radio, reading uh, the, 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 the newspapers. I was surprised at some of the sentiments and the passion with which those sentiments were expressed by one side or the other concerning mixing of genders in halls. In the publication of such news, it's important for the journalist to make sure that they are reporting the news and not bringing their personal feelings into the argument, into the discussion, because it tarnishes the discourse, it sours the news, and it is very unnecessary. We must always also bear in mind the importance of public order and the rule of law. It took the irresponsible utterances of a, a radio announcer to cause a genocide that killed millions of people. We must be very, very careful about what we put out there. It is also very important that what is the work that is done by investigative journalism the product, it has to be knowledge-based. Having nosed out by whatever means, the secret cameras, the secret recording devices, having nosed out 
all that information, it is important not just to put the raw material out there without first doing some background work to make sure that the wrong you think is going on is actually a wrong. Because sometimes that wrongness may be only in your perception. And when you are ready to put it out there, then do it with boldness, without fear and without favor. But it's important, once again, as I already said, we are, the journalists are molding the national ethos. Who we will be, who our grandchildren are going to be, what kind of character they will have, what values they will have, how strongly they will fight against corruption, how lackadaisical and laid back they are going to be. Oh, a lot of it depends on the caliber and the quality of journalistic output. And it is very, very important that we remember this at all times. Therefore, let's research well. Let's get the facts right. Let's even delve into the applicable laws and bring it to the knowledge of the people. I wish every, every newspaper, every radio station, every television station will have adequate space each week I'm not saying each day, each week, that is dedicated to areas, important areas of the law. Not the sensational ones, but the boring ones, but the ones that form the foundation of our society, of our, of our democracy, of constitution, constitutionalism. I've always, like, I've always asked people, I like to ask people, what do you know about the difference between constitutionality and constitutionalism? You should ask yourselves that. And I would like that, I, I hope that next year, during the award ceremony, there will be somebody who would write a wonderful article, a very learned, a very well-researched article on constitutionality and constitutionalism and its relevance to our national development. If we did that, there will be a lot of, we will stop a lot of time wasted. Now, to help with this, and to help with improving the knowledge base of, the, of, of journalism in this country, I have for a while now been discussing with uh, Nana Jana Painting about the possibility of some kind of standing re-interaction that we can have between the Judicial Training Institute and, 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 the gen and journalists so that once a year, whatever, there is, there is an interaction based on learning, so we, one of the most important things concerning every Every, or every journalist should be contempt of court and should also be the law of libel, which is still there. Not criminal libel, but civil libel is there. And civil libel can actually end up collapsing, a, it can end up collapsing a, a press house or a media house simply because of carelessness and lack of knowledge and misapplication of the law. So the invitation is open and I hope that we will before the year, before this time next year, have at least had the first interaction. Now, in terms of education, there's something that has always irked me when in the newspapers, on radio, on television, references are being made to members of the judiciary and the, the mode of address is done wrongly. I have been actually addressed as your majesty before. Wrong, wrong. We don't have that in the judiciary. 
um, her ladyship. We used to be all lordship, but some years back, uh, the just Chief Justice, the late Chief Justice Akwa, instructed that there is now time to differentiate the genders. So the, the Lady Justices of the Superior Court, the Superior Court being High Court up to the Supreme Court, uh, Lords, Lord, Lord Justice, Your Lordship, or Lady Justice, or Your Ladyship. In the Circuit Court, the person who presides before, be, who presides over the circuit court is a judge of the circuit court addressed as your honor, not honorable, not anything, your honor, your honor, judge, so and so. And then in the magistrate court, which is also the district court, the form of address is your worship. And so, you worship in the magistrate court, you honor in the circuit court, and you lord or lady in the superior court. I thought that is just a modicum of esoteric knowledge that I would like to share. Finally, I just want to say that the search for the truth and the delivery of justice in all cases and at any time, both media and the people will have to take note that evidence will remain the rule of the game in any interrogation of the breach of privacy. Limits of the public interest and the justification of investigative journalism. Let us bear this in mind at all times. And thank you very much for your attention. God bless our homeland, Ghana. And God bless everyone here. Please stay with us a little longer because she's going to confer a few awards uh, for us. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause once again for the Chief Justice. Stay with me, ma'am, just a few seconds. Now, the Ghana Journalist Association's uh, constitution, uh, the Article 4 of the Constitution says a national council uh, may confer honorary membership on individuals who are not ordinarily qualified for membership under some of the clauses. Now, uh, those who have shown exemplary interest in the association and have contributed substantially to its development and that of the media can be awarded. So. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome these five members that the GJA wants to uh, confer these awards onto, and the Chief Justice will help us with that. The first person is Dr. Osei Kwame Despite of the Despite Group. We understand that he's being represented by his son, Ken. All right, a round of applause, please. And this is for your father, by the way. <laughs> the next person is Dr. Enes Ofori Sapo of Despite Special Group. Dr. Enes Ofori Sapo of the Despite Group. Dr. Papakwesi Indrum of Group Indrum. We understand he has had to attend to an emergency, so he's gone at the moment. Is there anybody from Group Indrum to represent Dr. Papakwesi Indrum? And of course, Nana Amo Tobing, the first of Tobinko Group. Nana Amo Tobing of Tobinko Group, sir, if you're here. So some of them are actually taking the medals for someone else. Don't worry. Dr. Daniel Kwesi Kranting Trum of the Multimedia Group Limited. Katie, as we call him, Kwesi Trum. He will be represented by Mr. Ken Ansa who's Chief Operating Officer. A round of applause. Hey, that's my boss. You want him to fire me or something? Thank you very much. In fact, if you could do it better, I'll be very happy. <laughs> Obviously, you don't want me to be happy. That's okay. All right, that's for Mr. Kwesi Chum. He's been represented by Ken Ansa. The next person is Commissioner of Police, Dr. George Dampari. He's with the Ghana Police Service. Dr. George Dampari.
Well, that's a very beautiful sight, I must say. And the final person on our list, there goes the medal by the Chief Justice. Ladies and gentlemen, even though they, some of them may not necessarily be the ones who are receiving, please, a round of applause, a very big one for them as we go into the next session of the... Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chief Justice. Oh, a, a picture with the Chief Justice? A quick one? Okay, please, ma'am. They'd like to take a picture, all of them, with you. Thank you very much. We're going to the next stage of this award. We'll bring you the next categories of the awards. And very soon we will be out of here, I promise you. Smile. And there it is. Thank you very much, Paparazzi. Thank you very much, Chief Justice. And congratulations to those of you who are receiving the medal and for those who are representing. We'll bring you back the, cat the next categories of the awards. Thank you very much and congratulations to those who have been confirmed members of the GJA. We'll move on to the second batch of awards and I'm going to start first with best radio. Best radio station to help us with the presentation is Honorable Kojo Ponukuma, who is the information minister designated to join us for the presentation for the best radio station. The best radio station goes to Peace FM. This award is sponsored by McDan. Next award, Environment Electronic. Environment Electronic to help us with the presentation, Mrs. Sophia Lindsay. Mrs. Sophia Lindsay, help us with the presentation of this award. Best Environment Electronic goes to Porsche Gabo of TV3. With the story, effects of plastic waste in marine life. Mrs. Sophia Lindsay, please, if you are here, join us for the presentation of this particular award. Mrs. Sophia Lindsay. Let's put our hands together for Mrs. Sophia Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Sophia Lindsay, okay. Congratulations, Portia. Next, Human Rights Print. Human Rights Print, to help us with the presentation, George Agri of Amnesty International. George Agri of Amnesty International. And the winner for Human Rights Print goes to Samuel Ladade Akapo, who is with the Ghanaian Times. With a storyline, child registration, a weapon of fighting defilement. Let's put our hands together with Samuel. Congratulations, Samuel. Next is best newspaper. Best newspaper to help us with the presentation, Abba Loco. To help us with the presentation, Abba Loco. Abba Loco, kindly join us here for the presentation for the best newspaper. 
And the winner for the best newspaper goes to Daily Graphic. Daily Graphic. Abba Loco. Abba Loco, can you please help us with the presentation? Daily Graphic, best newspaper. Congratulations, Daily Graphic. Sports Journalist Radio, Sports Journalist Radio, Nana Day, please join us for the presentation of this one. The winner for Sports Journalist Radio is Dan Kwekuyabua. Dan Kwekuyabua. Dan Kweku Yabwa, please FM. If it's not here, someone can take this on his behalf. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, human rights with focus on child protection for television. Human rights with focus on child protection for television. Washington, New York, if you are here, please join us for the presentation of this one. Washington, New York, if you are here, please join us for the presentation of this one. The winner for Best Human Rights with Focus on Child Protection Television goes to Ernest Menu. Ernest Menu. The presenter, um, Washington Water, please join us for the presentation. Washington Water, please join us for the presentation of this particular award. Human Rights with Focus on Child Protection Television. Ernest Menu, Media House, as uh, Joy News. Washington New Aqua, please join us for the presentation of this particular award. Washington New Aqua. All right, we'll get Robert Pullman to do this one. Human rights with focus on child protection radio. Human rights with focus on child protection radio. Mr. Dixon Tunde, National Director for World Vision. If you are here, please join us for the presentation of this particular award. Human rights with focus on child protection radio. Mr. Dixon Tunde, National Director for World Vision. If you are here, please join us. And the winner for human rights with focus on child protection radio goes to Rebecca Ekpe of GBC Radio Ghana. Rebecca Ekpe. Let's put our hands together for her.
Congratulations and thank you very much. Best television station. Best television station. To help us with the presentation of this particular award, Robert Coleman of Zoom Lion, please join us here. Robert Coleman. And the best television station goes to UTV. UTV. Let's put our hands together for them. Let's just let's, let's do it for them. Thank you very much and congratulations to UTV. Best layout and designed newspaper. Best layout and designed newspaper. Mr. Kojo Kwatin of Ghana Commercial Bank, if you are here, please join us for the presentation of this particular award. Best layout and design newspaper. Mr. Kojo Kwatin, if you are here, you join us for the presentation of this one. And the winner for the best layout and design newspaper goes to Daily graphic, daily graphic. Mr. Kojo Kwaten of GCB, Ghana Commercial Bank. Let's put our hands together for them. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's put our hands together, let's put our hands together. Congratulations. The final award for this particular badge, Agriculture Print. Agriculture Print, and to help us with the presentation is um, Richard Sweely. Richard Sweely, who is a general manager for Agroecom, to help us with the presentation for this particular award. Agriculture print goes to Ama Amankwabefi of a Graphic Business. Let's put our hands together for Ama, please. Ama Amankwabefi. Let's do it for her. She, she works up here. Thank you very much, congratulations. We'll continue with the next badge, then we'll also continue with the final badge, which has got to do with the most promising journalist, the overall best journalist of the year. But for the meantime, I'll hand you over to the fire service band. Thank you very much.
Yatono, my dear Yatono, you know me in the legion, no me. Yatono, my dear Yatono, you know me in the legion, no me. 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 Yatono, my dear Yatono, you know me in the legion. Yatono, my dear Yatono, you know me in the legion. And the little fresh up in your way, you will quit for me. And when I had to know, you shall be told me. And the little fresh up in your way, you will quit for me. And when I had to know, you shall be told me. Some more money, some money, a balance, I dear. 
Let your love be some money. They might let it like you. You got some more money to want me. They tell them you to live. Let your love be some money. They might let it like you. Look what? Hey, baby. Let your money to want me. They tell them you to live. I look what? Hey, baby. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great, great, great band from the Ghana National Fire Service. Ladies and gentlemen, the next category and the next list of awards. I have the next 10 and I'm going to go through it quickly. Photojournalism, the best awards for photojournalism 2017 goes to David Ando of the Multimedia Group. It will be presented by a representative from Inolink Ghana. A representative from Inolink Ghana. Kindly join us here upstage. David Ando, Best Photojournalist 2017. There is David Ando, Photo J Bakupe. All right, a representative from Tobinko, Ghana. Thank you very much, sir. We'll do to us the honors presenting that prestigious award to David Ando of the Multimedia Group Limited. Congratulations, David. And the cheese moment is on, all for the cameras. Congratulations once again, David, and congratulations to us at the Multimedia Group. The next award, ladies and gentlemen, is Health Radio. And this award goes to Nanaya Konedu of Peace FM. This award will be presented. This award will be presented by Tobinko. Nanaya Konedu, are you here? The presenter for this award is Shadrach Frimpong, I beg your pardon, Shadrach Frimpong, Assistant Manager in Poultry and Layer Industries with Feed Management and Efficient Strategy Amplifies Ghana. He will do the awards for Nanaya Konedu of Peace FM. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the awardees. And this is an award for the Best Health Report Radio. The Best Health Report Radio. Our rep is from Amplifies Ghana to do us the honors. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Namaya Kunedu from Peace FM. The health, in, the health Award for Print will go to Doreen Hammond from Daily Graphic. Doreen, make your way here as Namaya takes leave of the stage. We still will take that by Amplifies Ghana. Amplifies Ghana will still do that for us. Doreen Hammond, Daily Graphic. Doreen Hammond, Daily Graphic. Health, the best health reports for print. The best health reports for print. The presenter is Amplifies Ghana. Amplifies Ghana will do us the honor. Amplifies Ghana. Nanaya, congratulations, Doreen. Shall we have the award, please? Thank you. Amplifies Ghana. Amplifies Ghana just left here. Amplifies Ghana, are you here? Amplifies Ghana, help us give this award to Doreen Hammond of Daily Graphic. There he is. Thank you. 
Congratulations to you, Doreen Hammond of Daily Graphic. The next award will be presented by the Ghana Tourism Authority's Akwesia Jiman, CEO of the Ghana Tourism Authority, Akwesia Jiman. The Best Domestic Tourism Report Award goes to Heritage Ghana. Heritage Ghana. Heritage Ghana. It will be presented by Akwesia Jiman of the Ghana Tourism Authority. Heritage Ghana. Congratulations to you, Heritage Ghana. UTV, UTV. Pardon my mix up there, UTV. Congratulations, UTV. You really have to forgive me for this. The best domestic tourism award goes to ETV. Can we have the awards, please? Okay. Congratulations, Team UTV. May I take the next award? That is for the best report in oil and gas, the best oil and gas reporting. The sponsor for this award is Cosmos Ghana, and a representative from Cosmos Ghana will be presenting this award. A representative from Cosmos is presenting this award that goes to Moses Doche Aklobotu of the Daily Graphic. The story is titled The Headaches of Decommissioning Oil Installations. Is Ghana ready? Moses Doce Akroboto, a representative from Cosmos Ghana. Congratulations to you, Moses, and Team Daily Graphic. Congratulations, Moses, there from Daily Graphic. The next award is Digital Journalism, the best digital journalism report 2017. And this will be presented by a representative from Vodafone Ghana. Shall we have a representative from Vodafone Ghana to help us with the best digital journalism award that goes to the Ghana News Agency, the GNA. A representative from Vodafone Ghana and congratulations to the Ghana News Agency. And they already have a rep here on stage. Shall we have a rep from Vodafone Ghana? A rep from Vodafone Ghana? Oh, there you are. All right. Well, the awardees are on their way. That is the Ghana News Agency. They've been recognized for the best digital journalism 2017. Congratulations, Ghana News Agency, and thank you, our rep from Vodafone Ghana. Congratulations. The next award goes to the Business and Financial Times, and this is Telecommunications Reporting 2017. The best telecommunication reporting for 2017 goes to the Business and Financial Times. Are they rep here? It will be presented by Ifwa Falfana from MTN Ghana. Business and Financial Times, are they represented here? Oh, we got it wrong. Well, we all make mistakes, don't we? Well, let's move on to the Agriculture Award. Agriculture Award Electronic. So the sponsor for this award is Agroecom. Small and micro, micro, small enterprise? 
small and micro scale enterprise. I believe that's the award uh, that MTN has to present. And that award goes to Mr. Akoli, are you here? Hello, Mr. Akoli, are you here? All right, and there's a little mix up there. Do forgive us as we sort this out. Let's take a very quick break here and let's sort out this uh, mix up there. But Ms. Falcon, I will have to come back to you. Kindly get backstage for us. Let's take a quick break here. We'll bring you back the rest of the awards. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly bear with us.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're quickly starting with the next batch of awards. And um, this one is small skill and medium, small and medium skill, small and medium skill print, small and medium skill print. The winner is Christian Akoli. Christian Akoli. And I asked uh, Mrs. Story in Akwaku Kote of NIB to join me for this award for the presentation. Mrs. Story in Aquago Quarter to join me for the presentation for this one. Small and medium skill print, Christian Akoli. Christian Akoli. Christian, I call you here, please. Can someone take it on his behalf, then? Christian, I call you. NIB Special Award for Business Finance and Economic Reporting. NIB Special Award for Business Finance and Economic Reporting. The winner is Suleiman Mustafa. Suleiman Mustafa.
Congratulations. Best morning show radio. Best morning show radio. Um, Magdan, please, if you are here, join us for this presentation. Magdan, if, if Magdan is here, please join us for the presentation for best morning show radio. The best morning show radio goes to CTFM Breakfast Show. Best morning show, radio, City FM breakfast show. Congratulations, City FM. Best morning show television. Best morning show television. Good morning, Ghana Metro TV. And Madan, Madan, please stay with us for the second presentation. Oh, well, come on, representing Madan. Good morning, Ghana Metro TV. Best morning show television. Best report in health. Congratulations. Best report in health. Uh, Mr. Daniel Japanin of um, Tobinku, if you are here, please join us for the presentation for this one. Mr. Daniel Japanin. Best report health television. Seth Kwame Boateng. Seth Kwame Boateng. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Seth Kwame Boateng, Best Report Health Television. Best Rural Reporting Electronic. Best Rural Reporting Electronic. Uh, the presenter of the one to help us with the presentation is Professor Kwame Kwansa Edu, Director of uh, GIJ. Please join us for the presentation of this particular award. Best Reporter Rural Electronic. And the winner goes to Jojo Kobna. Jojo Kobna. Let's, let's welcome Jojo Kovna, best rural reporter electronic. Best rural reporter print, best rural reporter print, and still to help us with the presentation is um, Professor Kwame Nakwan Director of GIJ. 
And the winner for the best rural reporter print goes to David Kojo Asanisi. David Kojo Asanisi, if you're here. David Kojo Asanisi, let's put our hands together for David. Congratulations, thank you very much. Small scale mining, that's um, illegal mining print. Small scale mining, touched um, illegal mining. I asked uh, Professor Fimpon Boateng to help us with the presentation of this particular award. Professor Fimpon Boateng, let's put our hands together for him. Small scale mining, illegal mining print goes to Gabriel Ahiabo. Gabriel Ahiabo. Gabriel Ahiabo. Congratulations, thank you very much, Prof. Small scale mining electronic. Small scale mining electronic. To help us with the presentation, Charles Bisu. Charles Bisu, help us with the presentation for this particular one. Small scale mining electronic, and the winner goes to Kwame Enum. Kwame Enum, let's put hands together. Kwame Enum, let's put hands together to welcome Kwame Enum. Next, sanitation and hygiene. Sanitation and hygiene um, will be presented to us by officials of Gamma Sanitation. That's Anthony Mensa and uh, George, if you are kindly join us here for the presentation for sanitation and hygiene. The presentation will be done to us by Gamma Sanitation. That's Anthony Mensa and uh, George. If, if you're here, please join me on stage for the presentation for the sanitation and hygiene. The winner for sanitation and hygiene is Caesar Abagili. Caesar Abagili. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together to welcome Caesar. Let's do it again for Caesar, please. Congratulations, Caesar. Thank you very much. We'll be shortly and rightly back for the final batch of awards. Then we'll say goodbye. The Fire for Service Band, please give us some song. Thank you very much.
Much. We'll run through this quickly. The next category of awards, I start with the Best Wash Award. That's Water Sanitation and Hygiene Award. It goes to Justice Adaboy of Xinhua News Agency. It will be presented by World Vision Ghana, Mr. Atta Ahin. Mr. Atta Ahin will present this award to Justice Adaboy of the Xinhua News Agency. Congratulations to you, Justice. May I have a representative from World Vision, Mr. Atta Ahin, to present this award to Justice Adoboy 
And while justice is coming, the best TV program I can will be next. That award goes to Justice Other Boy, the best watch awards. Justice is with the Xinhua News Agency. The best TV program, Akan. The best TV program for the Akan category goes to Atenka TV for the Diasa program. It will be presented by Franklin Soa, the Director of Marketing for Graphic Communications. Director of Marketing for Graphic Communications will present the best program TV and in the Akan category to Atenka TV for the Diasa program. Franklin Soa is the director of marketing for graphic communications. And there comes the Diasa crew. Certainly, a round of applause. We'll welcome them nicely. Congratulations, Team Diasa, and to the Atenka TV crew. Congratulations to Atenka TV and Team Diasa. And thank you very much, Mr. Franklin Sowa, Director of Marketing, Graphic Communications. The next award is the Development Journalism, the best award or the best development journalism report for Ford Feathering SDGs, print. This is the print category. It goes to Timothy Inyebe from Daily Graphic. It will be presented by MTN's Efua Falconer. Efua Falconer from MTN will do us the honors. The Best Development Journalism Award for Feathering SDGs Print category. Congratulations, Timothy. And Efua Falconer from MTN will help us with this award. Congratulations, Timothy. And thank you very much, Ifwa Falcona. Thank you very much. Ifwa Falcona is with MTN. And Timothy gets to win the development journalism for feathering SDGs print category. The best reporter for disability reporting, electronic category, is Alice Aite from GH1 Media. It will be presented by a representative from Malcolm. A representative from Malcolm. Can we have a representative from Malcolm? Malcolm. A representative from Malcolm, Ghana. And congratulations, Alice Aite of GH1, for the best report in disability for electronic or the electronic category. The presenter for this award is a representative from Malcolm Ghana. Malcolm Ghana. Congratulations, Team GH1. And there they are. Do you want to come up, team? Congratulations once again to all of you. We got a representative from Malcolm there helping us. Thank you very much, sir. And I think the team will stay here with me a little while. Stay here with me. Because the next 
The next award is the best development journalism for Federing SDGs Electronic. It goes to Ridwan Karim Dini Osman. GH1 TV will be presented by World Vision, a representative from World Vision. A representative from World Vision. Okay, stay on the stage for us. This award goes to Ridwan Karim Dini Osman with GH1 TV. Development journalism for Federing SDGs 2017. We have a representative from World Vision to present that award to Ridwan Karim Dini Ospa. Congratulations, Ridwan Karim Dini Ospa, and to the GH1 team. Congratulations, guys. And thank you very much, World Vision. The next award is the best HIV AIDS reporter 2017. It goes to Linda Tenya Aite from Daily Guide. The representative from Ghana AIDS Commission will do us this honors. A representative from the Ghana AIDS Commission. Representative from the Ghana AIDS Commission to present the best HIV and AIDS report award to Linda Tenya Aite of Daily Guide. Congratulations to you, Linda, and to the Daily Guy team. And Linda is looking very beautiful, very, very beautiful. Linda, congratulations to you once again. The next award. It's transport and road safety. The best report in transport and road safety, it goes to Severus Kaladeri and Seth J. Bokwe of the Daily Graphic. It will be presented by David Osafo Adonte, who is with the National Road Safety Commission. Mr. Adonte from the National Road Safety Commission help us present this award to Seth J. Bokwe and Severus Kaladeri of the Daily Graphic. That award is a Transport and Road Safety Award, the best award in transport and road safety. Congratulations once again, Team Daily Graphic. And thank you very much. Mr. Adontain from the National Road Safety Commission. All right, the next award is Environment, the best environment or environmental reporter print. And it goes to Seth J. Buffet once again from Daily Graphic. This will be presented by the Minister for Environment, Professor Frimpon Boateng. Is there a representative for him? Any representative for the Minister? I guess we'll have to call back the representative from the Road Safety Commission to help us. Sir, Ms. Adonte, can you help us present this award? Thank you very much. This is the best environment report for print. It goes to Seth J. Bokwe from the Daily Graphic. Once again, Seth, congratulations to you and Team Daily Graphic. The best, that, that award is for environment, print. Environment, print. Thank you very much, Mr. Adonte. Congratulations, Team Daily Graphic. Now let's call on the best agri reporter 2017 electronic. The best agri reporter 2017 electronic. It will be presented by Agroecom, a representative from Agroecom. And this award goes to my colleague Joseph Opoku Gakpo from the Joy News Front. 
or from the Multimedia Group Limited, Joseph Opoku Gako, our parliamentary correspondent, by the way. Congratulations, Joseph. It will be presented by Agroecom. Agroecom. Do we have a representative from Agroecom? Please help us do this award presentation to Joseph Opoku Gako, our professor in the newsroom. Our professor in the newsroom. He will become a professor very soon, by the way. <laughs> Agroecom. Do we have a representative from Agroecom? Or shall I present this award myself? Please bring me the award and let me present it. Since there's no rep from Agroecom, am I allowed to do this? Joseph Opokugako, congratulations. Congratulations to you, Joseph. Please, let's add the certificate, certainly. Our one and only professor in the newsroom. Joseph, congratulations to you. And that brings me to the end of this uh, cluster. We're going to bring you the rest. Please, ladies and gentlemen, do bear with us. We know it's quite late but we're wrapping up very, very soon. Congratulations to all award winners so far. Do stay on, we'll bring you the rest. Shall we take a quick interlude? Shall we take a quick interlude from the Ghana National Fire Service Band?
Thank you very much, Fire Ban. We'll continue with our awards. This is going for Best Female Journalist. Best Female Journalist. To help us with the presentation is His Excellency Chris Lamura, who is the Deputy Head of Mission at the U.S. Embassy. Your Excellency, if you're here, kindly join us for the presentation for the Best, best Female Journalist. The winner for the best female journalist goes to Jamila Aquili Okechi. Congratulations, Jamila. Best cartoonist for print and electronic. And uh, Mr. Ifa Falconer, if you are here, please join us for the presentation of this one. Ifa Falconer, if you are here, please join us to present this one. Best cartoon is print and electronic. It goes to Akosia Cartoon. Akosia Cartoon. And the presenter, Ifua Falcon, please join us. Akosia Cartoon. Best rural radio station, best rural radio station, and I would like to ask Franklin Soa to join us for the presentation of this one. Franklin Soa, if you are here, please join us. Franklin Soa of uh, Graphic Group Communications, Franklin. The winner for the best uh, rural radio station goes to Hello FM. Hello FM, best rural radio station.
Franklin will stay with us for the next award. And the next batch of awards for regional FM stations, best regional FM stations. And for the DJ special award for regional and rural FM station. Hello FM for the Ashanti region. Hello FM, Ashanti region. Hello FM, Ashanti region. Hello FM, Ashanti region. Special award for regional FM stations. We would like to call upon Michael Kluge, Michael Kluge, to join us for the presentation of this one. MD for Jirapa, Dubai, Royal Cozy Hotel. Michael Kluge, please join us for the presentation of this particular award. DJ Rural um, Special Award for regional FM stations, and the winner goes to Yem FM in Volga, Upper East Region. Yem FM. Michael Kluge. Michael Kluge, please join us for the presentation of... EMFM. For the Greater Accra region, it goes to Obonu FM. For the Greater Accra region, Obonu FM. And we'll ask a rep from Ghana Maritime Authority to join us for the presentation of this one. A rep from Ghana Maritime Authority to join us. Obonu FM, DJ Special Award for Regional FM Stations, Greater Accra. Obonu FM, and we asked a rep from the Ghana Maritime Authority to join us for the presentation of this one. Rep of Ghana Maritime Authority, if you are here, please join us. If not, we kindly call upon Mr. Frank um, Soa, Franklin Soa, to help us with this presentation too. Mr. Franklin Soa, to help us with this presentation too. If not, Mr. Frank Soa. Let's put on today from Francois to tell us with this presentation. So thank you very much. DJ Special Award for Regional FM Stations, and this is going to the best in the Bono and Hapu region, and that is Moonlight FM. Moonlight FM. Moonlight FM. We ask a rep from Voltic to join us. Voltic to join us with the presentation of this one. Voltic, please join us to present the best regional FM station for the Bono Hafu region. Moonlight FM. Voltic. If uh, Voltic is not here, we ask uh, maybe Skitcher to join us for the presentation of this one. Maybe Skitcher, please, if you are here, join us to present the best uh, radio station in the Bono Half region, Moonlight FM.
Previous Kesha will stay with us for the next award. Special DJ awards for uh, regional FM stations, the Volta region, Hekeli Radio in Ho. Hekeli Radio in Ho. Eastern region to the eastern region, and the winner is uh, Ago FM. Ago FM in the eastern region. Maybe Skisha doing the other presentations for us. So the Western region, the winner is the West End Radio. West End Radio. West End Radio. Central region, central region, the best radio station in the central region is the Radio Central. Radio Central, please join us. Radio Central. West region to the Upper West region. Radio Wa. Radio Wa, please join us. The best radio station in the Upper West region. Radio Wa. This kitchen will do the final one for us still. And this is Tamale. Tamale, the best radio station in Tamale, the northern region, is ZA FM. ZA FM. ZA FM. ZA FM. ZA FM. Thank you very much. Please, let's put hands together for maybe Skitcher. Thank you very much. And I do have the last set. I do have the last set of awardees, and just after this, we leave here. I promise you that. The next award is for Democracy and Peace Building Media House, and it goes to UTV. This will be presented by Robert Coleman with Zoom Lion. Robert Coleman of Zoom Lion will help us present this award to UTV for the best programs in democracy and peace building. Robert Coleman is presenting this award to UTV. Congratulations once again, Team UTV. 
And thank you very much, Mr. Coburn. The next award is the Best Crime and Court Reporting Award. It goes to Joyce Danso of the GNA, Ghana News Agency. This award will be presented by a representative from Newmont, Ghana. Do we have representatives of Newmont, Ghana? To join us here on stage. Representatives from Newmont, Ghana. To present the award for best crime and court reporting to Joyce Danso of the Ghana News Agency. Newmont, Ghana representatives. Do we have representatives from Newmont, Ghana? Anybody stepping in for Newmont, Ghana? Not yet. Can I have Mr. Coleman once again? Mr. Coleman, can you help us do this award once again? Mr. Coleman, can you help us do this award? Thank you very much. The best crime and court reporting award for Joyce Danso of the Ghana News Agency. Congratulations, Team GNA. The next award will be disability print. Disability print. Disability print. And that award goes to Emmanuel Edu Jamara. Emmanuel Edu Jamara. Congratulations, Emmanuel Edu Jamara. May I have a representative from SNIT? Representative from SNIT to present this award for us. Representative from SNIT to present this award for Best Disability Report Print Category to Emmanuel Edu Jamra of Daily Graphic. Sorry, sir. Congratulations to Team Daily Graphic for the Best Disability Report Award 2017 Print. Congratulations, Team Daily Graphic. Yo, it will be presented to you, sir. Please, backstage. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Iman Oledu Jamra with Daily Graphic. And thank you very much, our representative from SNIT. Special award for anti galamsi reporters. And this is sponsored by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. We have a um, couple of names here. I'm going to mention the names and you join us. Um, Kojo Ajiman of City FM, Kojo Ajiman of City FM, Latif Idrisu of Joy FM, Clara Mlano of GTV, Clara Mlano of GTV, Godwill Arthur of uh, GNA, Godwill Arthur of GNA, Steven Kweku Fosu, Stephen Kwekufosu of Oman. Stephen Kwekufosu of Oman FM. Timothy Njibbe of uh, Daily Graphic. Timothy Njibbe of Daily Graphic. Claudia Nyako of uh, Ghanaian Times. Felix Kofi of GBC Radio. And Joyce Dechi of GBC Radio. Dominic Lodge will join us on stage. Dominic is a, an executive of the GJA. He's joined us on stage. So they take this together and they all join us backstage because we've got the plaques back there just trying to wrap this up really quickly. And we've got the very special final two awards that's coming up right after them. Please join us backstage when you finish from here. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this will be the moment that we've all been waiting for. 
Well, I'm being told to hold on, but this will be certainly the moment we're all waiting for. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you who is the most, the Kamala Duma most promising young journalist of the year 2017. This award, ladies and gentlemen, will be presented by a representative from Ashfoam. Can we have a representative from Ashfoam here? There he comes. Thank you very much, sir. This is the Kamala Duma most promising young journalist award 2017 and it goes to ladies and gentlemen with a round of applause let's welcome alice Ayete of gh1 alice Ayete, gh1 tv congratulations alice Ayete. and that award will be presented by a representative from ashford Alice Aite is also getting a 10 super high density mattress from Ashfoam. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together, Alice. Alice will sleep properly. Kamala Dubon was promising journalist. Congratulations, Alice. And then comes the team, Team GH1. of GH1 is the Kamala Dumont most promising journalist of the year Interestingly, I've just regained some bit of energy. We'll have to go through another session again, but uh, I guess we just want to go home. So the overall PAV answer, Journalist of the Year, 2017. Why are you looking at me? The overall PAV answer, Journalist of the Year. You, ca you can't read the name? 2017. <laughs> Let's do it together on the count of three. Ladies and gentlemen. The winner is getting lots of goodies from Ash Foam and other packages too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help us welcome and do receive the Journalist of the Year. 2017. Bernard Abler! Bernard Abler of CTFM is the PAV and journalist of the year 2017. 
Congratulations, Bernard. Congratulations, Bernard Avila and Team City. And they are here in their numbers. Congratulations, Bernard. Congratulations, Bernard. And, uh, All right, we'll, we'll, we'll like to hear briefly from Bernard, and after that, our chairperson will give us a closer remark. So, whilst we're all standing here, Bernard. So, let's keep standing. Let's wait for the award winner to speak. He speaks every day, by Charlie the way. Charlie Woman of Fans, Thank you very much indeed. It's been a very long night, and I don't really think it's a night for long speeches. So I'm just going to say three, three groups of thank yous. First, I want to thank my family for supporting me and believing in me to be a journalist. My parents, Mr. and Mrs. Avle, and my wife, Justine. She's the secret behind my strength. So I thank them. Then, I want to thank my colleagues at City, my boss, Samens, who took a chance on me as a 23-year-old, put me on air many years ago. The rest is history. The team standing here and all the young guys at City who do a lot of hard work but never get seen or heard because they support we, the front people. Please thank them for me. And finally, those who fought for media freedom. I entered Radio Universe in 2000 because the airways had been liberalized a few years before. Some journalists lost their lives. People like Charles Reku, Broby, Kweku, Baku, and Co., whose hard work makes it easy to be a journalist today. I acknowledge them for the support they've given and the mentorship from afar. And finally, to you here, it's almost 1 a.m., you are still here. Thank you for staying. Thank you, GJA. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bernard. And we'll go for a closer remark from uh, our chairperson. Hello, everybody. I, 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 I understand why there's a stream of people going out there. I wish I were in the front there heading out too. I thank all of you. You've been wonderful. It's been a very, very long night, but a lot of nice things have happened here. Congratulations to the journalists of the year. Congratulations to all who have won awards. Your hard work has paid off. The problem with success is that you have to now fight to stay there. So next year, we want to see more of you winning other awards and maintaining your stand. Thank you very much, EJA, for making me a part of this night. God bless you. Thank you so much, Professor Henrietta Bosa there. And we'll take a final word of prayer, and it will be done, of course, by Dominic Koje before we go. And I know, in fact, people are already going. But yes, we'll still pray. Dominic. <laughs> 